want to be disrupting ordinary people, but we've tried non-disruptive protest for about 30 years since we've known about the climate crisis and it hasn't been listened to. You know, the government has not listened to that. The only thing that gets the press, you know, journalists and presenters, they don't want to report on the climate crisis unless we cause public disruption. So this is the way to sound the alarm about the emergency and put pressure on our government to end all new oil and gas licenses. I think slow marching is an effective thing. Firstly, it's legal. So we're exercising our legal democratic right to protest. So it's accessible for everyone. You can come join us 12 p.m. every Saturday in Parliament Square. Um, and it does cause disruption. And that is what ha in history has shown that causing disruption has created social change. The suffragettes, they smashed windows, they slashed paintings. The civil rights movement, they did marches on the roads, they blocked the traffic as well, and that created change. So I think it's effective because it, 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 it is putting pressure on the government in that way. Uh, I've done uh, about five uh, just oil actions before this. Uh, I spent a week in prison. Uh, I've been arrested five or six times. It hasn't put me off because the alternative of not doing direct action is being complicit in genocide. You know, there's people all around the world in the global south dying already in famine, in floods. You know, 33 million people in Pakistan last year were displaced by floods. That is genocide. I cannot stand by and watch that happen. I cannot be complicit in that. Um, so I must take action, I must do everything I can.